Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Dudley Hilton Show. We're talking University of Pikeville football with the all-time winningest coach in Kentucky high school history. 345 wins, 77% win percentage, 34 consecutive winning seasons. Now 1-0 and and on his way to a 35th consecutive winning season. We'll take nothing less. Ladies and gentlemen, Papa Bear, your coach at the University of Pikeville Bears, Dudley Hilton. Coach, congratulations. Well, thank you, Andrew. It was just a great night. And, you know, the first game last week, I don't know, I wasn't very nervous. The other night, I got pretty uptight and being a real real game and my first college game. And, uh, uh, you know, the atmosphere was great, uh, facilities and everything. Uh, it was just a good college atmosphere that night. So, uh, you know, everything went well. And, of course, what tops it off was a big win. And uh, I'm sure it was a big win. I had a chance to speak to you during pregame Saturday before the game against Southern Virginia. And, uh, there was a different nerve about Dudley Hilton. Is that the true Dudley Hilton game face that we saw Saturday as opposed to the before the game against Point? Yeah, I, I kind of told the kids there last week there when we got done with our scrimmage game, I said the fun part's over with now, you know, and uh, you're going to see a different uh, different atmosphere and, and I thought we did I thought we did in the dressing room I thought we did on a pregame and everything we did just uh, uh, you know we had a pregame on Friday afternoon and uh, you know we we had a movie that night and I just feel like we all uh, took it a lot more serious and uh, with them being a little uh, uh, taking it serious caused me to get a little bit more nervous too uh, last week for last when they had the scrimmage game they hoop lob too much you know for me and it uh, but I, I really thought that the atmosphere was great in the dressing room, and uh, and I just thought that our kids turned it up a little bit and got their game face on. And I tell you, Andrew, when you work hard like we have, our kids is really sacrificed. We get up every morning at 5:30 and practice, and uh, you know, and and uh, we we really uh, ask a lot out of our kids, and I, I think they see that, and I think that they know that we're taking this game serious, and we're not here for funds, and. Uh, you know, the fun part is winning, and uh, there's no substitute for it, you know. But, uh, you know, that was uh, – uh, the game uh, was played hard, and I think that showed that we did take the game serious. And one thing I talked to some of the coaches last year said the home games uh, had a hard time uh, winning at home. And I thought, well, if we had a hard time winning at home, it means that uh, we did too much running around. We didn't take it serious enough. So I thought it's our Saturday that we all turned and put our game face on. We came out to win. 63-18 win in your opener, school record 63 points. You made it look easy. You must be thinking this college thing's easy. No wonder Joe Paterno won't retire. No, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, it, it hadn't been easy. I Believe me, it hadn't been easy, but it sure, uh, it sure made it look like it. But uh, I think, again, you, you know, it goes back to the coaching staff and everything we've put together here that uh, we've really worked on our discipline. Uh, we really cut our penalties down uh, very big. And, you know, when you – go from 200 yards penalty down to about 55 or 60. Uh, and then that showed that, uh, you know, we're we're here to play. And uh, uh, But it didn't come easy. We've done a lot of hard practicing since I've been here. Those are the things that no one sees. First things first from Southern Virginia, and we'll talk about this each week on the show, and that's an injury report from last week, guys that suffered nagging injuries or serious injuries. Well, right now we don't really have any of the reports out. We think we might have a few out, but we had a few kids sit out, and really it's it's something we don't put a lot of emphasis on because we got we got to keep on going and, and go. But we have got some kids that are, some of them are playing hurt and some of them are are out. But uh, right now I don't have the list that uh, exactly who all we got. But but I know we had a defensive tackle, the Woods boy, didn't play, and had an offensive center got hurt on the. First, uh, first series, but I try to tell my coaches, you know, there's uh, nobody don't want to hear excuses uh, of what happened, and you know, make sure we got somebody to take your place. And I think that's what my coaches done. They've done a great job of, uh, uh, you know, at least been trying to be two and three deep uh, at every position. You're listening to the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. We're coming to you from Jerry's Restaurant, South Mayo Trail, and you're invited to join us each week, 6:30 right here. It's We'll talk to the head coach of the University of Pikeville Bears. Tonight also special guests coming, offensive coordinator Al Holland of your Bears and the Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week coming up a little later. Trevor Hoskins, he's the leader of the offensive unit that put up 63 points against Southern Virginia University. Coach Hilton, the regular season opener versus Point University. Exhibition game, 
to Southern Virginia in the regular season opener. How much progress did this team make? Well, again, I talked there earlier about their penalties and how we kind of acted against the uh, point team out a little bit, uh, unnecessary things. And uh, I thought we uh, nipped those things a little bit and cut those back. I, I thought that uh, uh, defensive uh, play or special teams looked a, a lot better. And, you know, again, we didn't uh, we didn't try to play hardly as many guys we did against point because uh, that kind of made us look a little bad. But uh, on a whole, uh, I thought we made a, a good improvement. We're, we're a long ways from there. We, we've made some improvement on defense, but we got to keep working defense. Uh, offensively, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we did a good, some good things and, and some bad things. So, you know, we got plenty of room to, to improve. And, and what I see in our conference and who we've got to play down the road, we've got to keep improving every week. And, uh, you know, if we make as big improvement point to, as we get against Southern Virginia uh, to the Kentucky Wesleyan game and then we're on our way but if we don't improve a little bit every week uh, then our, our, our football team could be hurting but I think we'll improve and I think we'll get better. We've got a guest on the show tonight offensive coordinator Al Holland what impact on this team has coach Holland had with your transition and maintaining continuity with this offense obviously putting up 63 points the continuity is there. Well, you know, again, uh, you know, offense is, is more of a spread, wide open uh, uh, games uh, today and uh, what it is in high school, you know, and I've always been a power football coach and it's been very successful for me, but uh, the game's a lot faster and, and I think Al being a quarterback at Eastern and, and, and know the spread and know the, uh, you know, the uh, things he has to do to move the ball and, and you know, and getting him right, the right receiver and of course he's got the right quarterback and uh, a little tailback's pretty good, and just improving the offensive line. But uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, he knows his offense, and and uh, you know, that's uh, that's the game he knows. And you know, we just gotta, you know, we just gotta keep improving. I think he'll tell you too that you know that some things he wished he had a little bit better. Res uh, you know, a few bigger receivers. We we lost a big uh, receiver in in the, in the uh, two or three weeks ago. Could really helped him on his weapon and. He, you know, he needs uh, maybe another or two good running backs, and you know, to really, really get it explosive. But other night, he didn't look like he needed anything, did he? Didn't need much. <laughs> it's the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless, talking University of Pikeville football from Jerry's Restaurant, South Mayo Trail. And coach, I know you're in a college setting now, but I'm going to take you back to the classroom for just a moment. Southern Virginia, 63 points. You give up 18. I'd like for you to give us a letter grade each aspect of the game, offense, defensively, and then special teams. Well, you know, it's uh, it's pretty hard because I think uh, sometimes we really look good offensively. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you had to have a high grade when you score that many points, but, uh, you know, as coaches are never never satisfied. We always look at the, uh, the bad things the kids do. We let the parents tell them all the good things they do. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure all the parents would grade them A's, but, uh, I know the coaches uh, have a hard time putting the A's on anything. And, About a C minus. Uh, yeah, you know I don't know, but now de defensively, you know, same way defensively. Uh, you know, I thought we looked good at times. We bent. Uh, we never did. You know, we broke our maybe one time. You go down to one fourth down play. They threw a big long pass. If if they don't catch that ball, then then who knows? We might end up shutting them out. But they give them a little bit of enthusiasm right there, a little bit more uh, of uh, uh, spirits there, you know, and. Uh, picked their game up a little bit and they went on to score. But, uh, you know, I thought we'd give up a couple big plays, but we were there. And we never did see any plays where they were wide open that uh, nobody wasn't even close. And, and on that's that's what I look at as a coach. And, and as far as defense, uh, sure, I've already sat down with them and showed them a lot of mistakes they made. And But we made a lot of good things too, you know. So as far as giving grades, our kicking game, our boy uh, kicked nine extra points. So. You know, he sets a record, so how, what can you say about that? Went on a fake punt one time, didn't, wasn't very, well, we wasn't as successful on it, and, and uh, you know, that, that made that look a little bad, but uh, on, a, on a whole, uh, you know, uh, as far as a grade, I wouldn't touch it, but I know the people in uh, Pikeville and the areas thought we played a heck of a game, so I'm not going to change nobody's feelings. You, you got to take that, but tell the players it's about a C, yeah. C minus. Right, there yeah. you go. There you go. <laughs> the Dudley Hilton Show, of course, presented by Appalachian Wireless from Jerry's Restaurant. Coach, 
let's get personal for just a moment before we uh, take a break and we'll have Al Holland join us. Defensively, much improved, uh, particularly over the last year. You've got a guy starting middle linebacker who's a freshman and you know him very well as well as anybody and that's John Dudley Hilton. Nine tackles in the win to lead the team. Are you surprised by, first of all, I know you're proud. We've got a proud Papa Bear up here. But are you surprised by his quick transition to the college game? Well, I, I guess not really because, you know, he started all all four years for me. I think the uh, other night made his 57th game. He started for his daddy, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, but uh, the 56 games he played in high school, he's always been a linebacker. That's what he always uh, wanted to do. And, and you know, reads real well. And uh, he had a few more tackles. He just didn't wrap up. And, you know, he's got to realize that, He's got, he's got to do a better job of wrapping up now than he did in high school. And he's just not going to go up there and be a big bull and bump them down, you know. They don't go down like they do in high school, you know. But uh, he gets a little bit better than that. But, uh, again, uh, you know, defense is just like offense. you got to have a team, and I think he'll be the first one to tell you that his front people played well. We really thought Larry West played an awful good defensive Indeed. back there. And, uh, you know, two or three other kids that played awful well. And, and again, you know, middle linebacker's supposed to make the tackles, and you know, and, and and he better keep that up because he won't be there long. They'll find another middle linebacker. But uh, you know, but you know, it just uh, you got to have a team, and and you know, uh, just like you're bragging on or bragged on Trevor, what kind of good job? But you got to have the receivers, you got to have the line, and defense is the same thing. If you don't you don't have a good front uh, front people up on defense, you don't have a good secondary. Uh, you can get all the tackles and throw all the passes you want. It, it don't don't do you no good if you don't have a team. And uh, you know, and I thought the other night uh, defensively uh, played well. But uh, you know, again, it's just like anything else. We got to improve on it. But uh, overall, I thought they did a good job. There you go, Dudley Hilton, and uh, he's the head coach of your University of Pikeville Bears. Right now, joining us, the offensive coordinator of your University of Pikeville Bears, Al Holland. And Al, welcome in. Congratulations, big win. It sure was, and uh, I thought our guys played real hard this weekend, and uh, you know, offensively put up some big numbers once again. But uh, you know, a lot of work still to do, and a lot of mistakes to get corrected this week. Al, before we get into last week's game and talk about some of the offensive things we want to talk about, I'd like for you to share with our, our listeners and our viewers your background. You're a long time removed from high school, and you've had a little different path to arrive here. But let's talk about that and, and finish off maybe with what you did this summer. Yeah, um, you know, played football at uh, Perry Central High School, went to Wake Forest uh, out of high school. Uh, was there two years, and then transferred back to Eastern Kentucky University where I got to play three years. We won two conference championships. Um, was OVC Player of the Year in 2007. And then I uh, got the opportunity to be a graduate assistant and be, you know, be a quarterback coach there at Eastern. Uh, you know, Coach Springston was the offense coordinator. He felt like, you know, I was ready to go ahead and, and start coaching the quarterbacks, and that re relieved him a little bit so he could work with other positions. Uh, ended up having the freshman player of the year that year. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I had a great re relationship with Trevor Hoskins. Um, then, you know, the following spring, uh, offense coordinator job came open here. You know, got in. Got in in the mix of it and then ended up getting the job. And, uh, you know, one of the first people I called was, uh, you know, Trevor Hoskins to see if he wanted to come down here and play some football. Um, and then, you know, last year was a up and down year. Uh, we put up, you know, big numbers, but, you know, a lot of improvement. And guys just learning the system and things like that. And uh, then we went through spring ball and, you know, and just seeing guys improve day in and day out. And then, you know, we get up here this summer um, and you get 25, 30 guys up here buying into the program and working hard. And, and that's what it's all about, is seeing these guys improve and uh, keep getting better week in and week out. Uh, you know, and then, you know, last spring played a little bit of arena football on top of everything else. Uh, you know, Coach Jones talked me into playing that. Uh, so, you know, then, then some of your players can see you going out there on the field and playing. And, you know, uh, when you're pushing them guys and they see you out there, you know, blood and sweat and working hard, uh, you know, it, they really buy in too. Changes the level of respect, I would imagine. Oh, yes, a lot. Last year? You had five games, the offense scored more than 30 points, two losses scored more than 50. How frustrating was that last year? Uh, you know, we, we just got to keep working. And, uh, you know, like I told our guys, you know, we got to keep buying in and work, come to work day in and day out. You know, don't live from the week week before. You know, even though we put up big numbers, you know, we're trying to win the next game. And this year I've really pushed for these guys, hey, 
all right, take it one game at a time. You know, and we've really learned that from Coach Hilton. You know, don't look at the whole season as a whole right now. Let's look, let's take it one week at a time. It was Point, then it was Southern Virginia, and now, you know, it's Kentucky Wesleyan this week. And they got to really prepare themselves. They put big numbers up last week, but hey, forget that. You know, we made some mistakes, and we got to get that corrected this week. And uh, you know, only uh, time will tell how good this football team can be. Sixty-three points in the season opener. It's a it's an impressive display by the offense. A school record for points scored in a single game. Number one, are you surprised? And number two, how do you refocus your offensive unit to not get cocky and to not overlook the next opponent thinking that they're pretty good? All we got to do is show that film. When we sit there and then we see mistake after mistake after mistake, and we're just beating ourselves and stopping ourselves. Uh, and, you know, 63 points uh, would have been a lot less. You know, we could have put up a lot more. But, uh, you know, our guys see that. And, uh, you know, I get them focused back in day in and day out. And, you know, we got to get them mistakes corrected and don't beat the Bears. That's what I tell them day in and day out. Uh, so, but, you know, this week, only time will tell. Talking with Al Holland, the offensive coordinator at the University of Pikeville, talking about the Bears' win over Southern Virginia University, 63-18. Impressive offensive display. Uh, very balanced display. 33 pass attempts. 33 rushes. Is that part of the game plan to be very balanced? Uh, you know, we just take advantage of what they give us. Um, and, you know, everybody talks about being a spread team, but hey, uh, you know, when they give us the run, the run's going to set up the pass, and the pass is going to set up the run. You know, we got off, got off to a strong start throwing the football the other night, and then it came to, hey, it was a time period where we had to run the football. Uh, and then once they started feeling back down in the box and trying to load the box on us, we started throwing the football again on them and just taking advantage of what they give us. And, you know, when you've got a veteran quarterback back there that can get us in the right play and get us in the right protections and check protections and flip them, things like that, you know, that means so much. And uh, people don't really see that part of him. And, uh, you know, and I'm very proud of what he's doing right now. Trevor Hoskins, of course, uh, we'll talk with in just a little bit. Uh, an important part of your offense, obviously. B.J. Iverson, Jordan Amos, some of those guys that are returning. How much easier does it make preparation with so many new faces on campus as well in getting ready during summer camp and now on a week-to-week -week basis? Oh, you know, it makes it two-to-one easier. And now these veteran guys can teach these guys uh, below them and lead by example. You know, we got a very young uh, running back crew back there behind BJ, and uh, you know, behind after him, there's a bunch of freshmen and a couple of redshirt freshmen and a sophomore. So uh, you know, them guys learn from him, and uh, you know, another day, you know, one of them gets a gets a chance to go in one play touchdown. Coach, I want to play. This this why I want to play. So you know, uh, they get out there working hard, and they're pushing. You know, trying to push the guy in front of them. And once you get that competition, that only makes your football team two to one better. New guys that have arrived on campus this fall, who's had the biggest impact? Who are some guys that maybe we haven't, they haven't gotten our attention yet, but you expect to see big things out of? You know, you're sitting there looking at uh, starting four freshmen up front right now. Um, uh, Caleb Wilcox, uh, Jesse Hensley, uh, Stephen Morales, and Victor Guyton. You know, that's four freshmen starting on an offensive line that just put up 63 points. And then, you know, you got Tanner Napier that's come in here and put up, uh, had two or three touchdowns in the first uh, couple games. <laughs> And been very uh, proud of his work ethic, and, uh, and he's still and, learning the game. And he's still learning. And you're talking about a guy that only played one year of high school football, right. and uh, comes out of Lexington, Kentucky. That was the regional player of the year up there. So, uh, you know, only the future's bright for him. Talk with Al Holland, offensive coordinator at the University of Pikeville, coming off a 63-point display, school record in the win over Southern Virginia and Kentucky Wesleyan, coming to the Hambly Complex this Saturday. Things a little tougher with Wesleyan coming to town. Yeah, uh, they got a good football team. You know, uh, they're coming off a tough loss. Uh, they went to uh, University of Indianapolis, um, and you know they're going to come in here with the tails on fire and be ready to to come at us. And you know, looking at our offense and putting up points last week, uh, you know, you know they're going to coaches using that as motivation. Hey, uh, you know, we got to hit them in the mouth and hit them early. So uh, you know, we got to keep working this week. Uh, you know, I know it's going to be a lot of rain in the forecast, but. Uh, be ready for to run the football and hey we got to be able to throw the football in the rain too that's offensive coordinator al holland of your university of pikeville bears congratulations good luck this Thank week you. and we'll look for another big uh, point display all right light up the scoreboard baby <laughs> welcome back in the dudley hilton show presented by appalachian wireless from jerry's restaurant south mayo trail pikeville and you're invited to join us Every Tuesday night at 6.30, we'll be here talking Bears football with the head coach of the University of Pikeville. Uh, 
just had offensive coordinator Al Holland on talking about the offensive display by the Bears in last week's win over Southern Virginia University. 63 points put up and joined now by a key member of that offensive unit. Trevor Hoskins, last year named Offensive Player of the Week for the nation. The NAI National Player of the Week threw for, um, I don't know, some ungodly numbers, 600 some yards against Georgetown. You're also the Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week uh, multiple occasions. And now after throwing for 382 yards and four touchdowns against Southern Virginia, Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week again. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, it was a it was a good week last week. You know, we came we came out. seemed like we were ready to play right off the bat. seemed like everybody was quick and offensively. You know, we obviously made some mistakes, especially after today, going back and watching the film. But I thought overall we did a pretty good job of preparing and going out and playing. Of course, you've got help around you. We want to talk about those guys, uh, your protection, your hands, guys as well. But first, let's learn a little about Trevor Hoskins, Middlesboro High School, and. Uh, Let's talk about your background going all the way back to high school. Uh, yeah, I'm just not too far from here. I played at Middlesbrough High School. I played for, for uh, Coach Kenny Roark there. And uh, after high school, I went to uh, East Kentucky University. Um, I was recruited by Kurt Bethard and Danny Hope, and those were the coaches that I originally went to Eastern with. And it seemed like within a year's time, you know, they were all gone. So, you know, it came to a point to where I had to make a decision what I was going to do. and. Uh, and decided to leave. But while I was there, you know, my time there was invaluable. I got to play behind uh, Coach Holland and um, just as much as I've learned from him since I've been here, I can honestly say that I've probably learned even more from him just, just watching him play. You know, he, he's, he's, he doesn't probably get enough credit for how smart he actually is playing the game of football. He's got a pretty nice football mind and that's one thing a lot of folks uh, give him a huge amount of credit for is uh, how, smart a, how smart a coach he is, but as a player as well. Back in your days at Middlesboro High School, I know Middlesboro, their biggest rival was Bell County. And now you're playing for the former coach of Bell County, who has the field name for him at Log Mountain. And quite some battles there. How does it feel to play for a guy that you used to go head-to-head uh, -head against your entire high school career? Uh, yeah, you know, we played them there in Middlesboro. It's big rivals and everything, but, you know, it's basically you can't do anything but respect a guy like coach Hilton even when you're in high school I mean he, he he just he basically kicks your butt you know I mean that's that's basically what he does and just to be able to get to play for him he heard all kinds of good you know I had plenty of friends that went to Bell County in high school and just hearing what kind of coach he is it's it's really good to be able to play for somebody like that as a high school player playing against him what were your thoughts well, you knew it was going to be a, going to be tough. He ran that, you know, it was three yards in a cloud of dust. If you could stop it, you could stop it. If you couldn't, you couldn't. And most of the time, you couldn't. Yeah. So it was it was tough, tough week. Log, Log Mountain, a tough place to visit. We're talking with Trevor Hoskins, the Mid South Conference Offensive Player of the Week, and uh, of course, the quarterback gets a lot of press. Uh, your name's out there. Uh, you get your picture in the paper, and everyone wants to talk to the quarterback. He's the uh, he's the glamour guy. But I know you would be one of the first to say that I'm not an offensive player of the week without my offensive linemen who protect me and give me a pocket, without the guys that make the catches when maybe my pass is not so perfect. Let's talk about those guys and how important they are. Absolutely. There's, uh, there's football is a team game, and especially on the offensive side of the ball, the running backs can't do anything. The quarterbacks can't do anything without those front five. I mean, those guys are what get the job done. We go as they go. You know, if they're if we don't have them going we're not going to move the ball we're not going to put up any points and as far as receivers we have some very talented receivers we have some returners then we have some new guys that's that's really stepped up and those guys are what makes everything go it's without them you know we don't we don't have an offensive football team a lot of quarterbacks will have a favorite receiver you don't you don't seem to have that you seem to spread it around pretty well you're comfortable throwing to anyone uh, yeah, it's that. You know, I have trust in all our receivers, but also this offense. This, I really believe, I truly believe that this is the best offense that anybody can run in the country. It's set up to where, depending on what the defense is doing, we have a, we have a counter for that, no matter what happens. And that involves every receiver. Some weeks it'll be the outside guys, some weeks it'll be the inside guys. And I feel like we have talent outside and inside that we can get the job done with all those guys. Trevor Hoskins, the Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week. He's in the top five in seven national categories after week one. So we're looking forward to big things. Trevor, what are some offensive goals for this team in 2011, and how good can this team be? 
Well, this team can be very good. We got to focus in, and I would like to think as an offense, you know, and as a team, we like to keep our goals small. The main thing is focus. You know, coach has done a great job of stressing it one week at a time. We, if we can focus in on one game, our next game, and just do what we're do what we're capable of doing, then the big picture will take care of itself. You know, we don't want to get outside of ourselves and, you know say, oh, conference championships right off the bat, you know, I mean, that, of course that's what we want to do, but we want to focus in, we want to take it one game at a time, and if we do that, then the big picture will take care of itself. Pretty level-headed guy, that's who you want leading your offensive unit. Trevor Hoskins, he is the Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week, and we look forward to seeing more of you this season, and uh, boy, that offense is fun to watch. I, I can only imagine what it's like being part of it. Oh, it's, it's, like I said, it's the best. You couldn't ask to play in a better offense. It's Congratulations on the Player of the Week honor. Congratulations on the win. And you have our best of luck wishes all season long. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Coach Dudley Hilton rejoins me now as the Bears prepare for Kentucky Wesleyan, a 6 o'clock kickoff at the Hamley Complex this Saturday. And uh, the Panthers come to town to take on our Bears. And, um, Coach, before we talk about a scouting report, let's – stop after win number one and let's let the listeners know the fans know what's a typical week like now that the regular season's underway for the players and for the coaches well you know i asked the coaches the other day i said did we get a day off and uh, <laughs> uh you know in high school you always got off a of saturday but uh, uh they uh after the game our saturday night you know we fed the kids and and sent them on the way and uh we started meeting Sunday and met with all the kids on Sunday afternoon and then come back uh, Monday and, and uh, meet with them again. And uh, uh, we usually don't pra we practice on Sunday after evening, but uh, uh, Monday we don't practice. And uh, then we come back Tuesday morning and uh, we practice at uh, 530. Uh, you know, they have to be there about quarter to six. First bus leaves at six or quarter till and second leaves at six. So. Uh, you know, we're out, we're, we're out on our football field about 6.15. We start, uh, uh, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then, uh, then we go down on uh, Friday morning, we practice our red shirts and our JV team. And then Friday afternoon, we have our pregame. And uh, that went over well. And then we have, uh, we have our devotional on uh, Thursday night at the, at the campus. And that, that was a big thing. Last, uh, last week, we had a 174 at devotion. So that, the preachers really liked that. So, uh, so anyway, on, on Friday, uh, we had our uh, 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 pregame on Friday afternoon. And Friday night, we gathered them up in the uh, auditorium and showed them a movie and, and uh, came in on Saturday morning, had a walkthrough, and went to the game on Friday uh, Saturday afternoon. So it's, it's a week thing and uh, well prepared and well planned. And uh, coaching staff does a great job with that. Of course, the schedule obviously will change with road games, but I have to ask because we have folks watching and listening right now. What movie did you show Friday night? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, Al got me to go to Millsboro and watch the Mill, uh, Bell County Millsboro game, so uh, I left the coaches behind and uh, we traveled over there to do a little scouting and uh, looking at uh, some of the players over there. Probably and some remember the Titans type it was, thing. Uh, I, I don't know, but they said it was too long, so <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but uh, you know, it's something we've never done before. Begin uh, just treating these kids like football players, and, sure. and and that's my biggest thing when I came here. That I want to treat these kids like they're somebody, just not not a number, not a just another another uh, uh, Pike uh, you know Pikeville College football team. Uh, this is. Uh, this is a new University of Pikeville, and, and uh, you know we're trying to uh, let these kids know that this game is very important, not only to them but uh, to the coaches and the communities and everybody that listens to it on the radio. And uh, you know, and that I think that's why we go the extra mile with our coaching staff, trying to do the little things to to make them feel like they're very important people. Yeah, not just on the field, but right? Off the field as well, and, and off the yeah, right. And you know, just like coming in after the game and giving them pizzas and. And these are things that I don't know if they've done in the past, but uh, you know we've uh, you know other day we give them all a new T-shirt and put it in their uh, a locker, and you, you just never seen so many smiles on some uh, young men faces in your life, you know. And I teased them up around the lunchroom. I said somebody said Santa Claus came last night, you know. So uh, you know they really enjoy it, and and I just I can sense it in, in them that they feel. 
they feel important. And, you know, and the winning will take care of itself. And, and I think when you feel good about yourself, then you're going out and make the effort on the football field. And, uh, you know, that's why we're taking this game very serious. Uh, you know, I tell them every time I didn't come here for funds, you know. And, uh, you know, the fun part is to win the game and, uh, you know, and, and play hard. I mean, I don't put all the emphasis on winning. Winning will take care of itself. And I think that's one good thing about our kids, that uh, they feel important. They, they feel they're going to get better every week just because – what they feel like uh, they're playing big time college football. The Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless from Jerry's Restaurant, South Mayo Trail. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to strap on some pads and go play. This guy, this guy's got me motivated. I may have a semester of eligibility, uh, <laughs> Coach. Yeah, Kentucky Wesleyan coming up this Saturday at the Hambly Complex. Same routine, six o'clock kickoff for your team, so they stay in routine. What do you know about Kentucky Wesleyan? Well, I know we're uh, facing a very experienced football team. I spent most of the day looking at last year's team and. Uh, uh, you know, see the same player. They got a left-handed quarterback's been there for uh, two or three years now, and and a nice-looking running back. And you know, they, 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 I think they've got nine returning back on offense, and about eight returning back on defense. And you know, they're, I think they're on the league ahead of us uh, in the division. So, and I guess you say we're stepping out of our our, uh, our division. So, so we're up against that, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for us, and again, this is one of those games. I don't have to say much to the kids because you know it's just like Trevor. He went to uh, Kentucky Wesleyan down there last year, and, and he knows what it gets. Be uh, you know he he's been that uh, you know on that side before getting right. beat by him. So you know now I threw that up to the kids the other night. I said I shouldn't have no trouble getting you up. I, you went down there last year and got your tails kicked. Now let's, it's our turn to to get up for this game, and I think our kids respond. I, I think we had a great practice this morning, and uh, hopefully the rest of the week it all goes well. And uh, and I got some things I can throw up to them, and uh, you know, and, and remind them that you know we've been there and done that by getting beat by this team. Now let's let's turn the tail on. But very experienced football team. Uh, a little bit. I think they're a pretty good uh, you know, size team. They're a lot bigger than us. So. So we're going to have to play with a lot of heart and a lot of enthusiasm. And, and, you know, and I think our defense has been doing that, really uh, coming at you from everywhere and uh, making things happen. And I know offensively uh, you know, we'll, we'll move the ball and, and do what it takes to win the football game. It's the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. Kentucky Wesleyan, the opponent, Saturday, 6 o'clock kickoff at the Hambly Complex. And, of course, we'll be on the air at 540 on Z-Rock 107.5 online at 1075zrock.com and I know we had some parents uh, of some kids that live away from here that uh, had a chance to hear the game over the weekend and uh, we were glad that they were able to do that. Coach, again, we'll close out the show as we will every uh, every opportunity, a chance for you to encourage and invite people to check out this Bears team this weekend. Well, I was really shocked our uh, Saturday uh, in the game that we had a lot of students that stayed behind and came to our football game. Uh, our band uh, sounded great. Uh, you know, I, I just very pleased that uh, uh, University of Piper has got a band that, uh, you know, they started raining and they went over behind on the, the uh, uh, behind home plate on the baseball field and continue to play. So I, that meant a lot to me. Good cheerleading. Uh, looked like we had a great number out there. And, uh, got, a, got a great PA announcer. He's done, a, you know, just his voice and everything there. So, you know, it's, it's just a great atmosphere. We just want to keep getting bigger. We just want to keep, uh, uh, you know, having enthusiasm. We're going after game number two and, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, jump on our bandwagon anytime you want to, but our bandwagon is rolling, and uh, you know we're we're going to show up every every Saturday and play the game like it's supposed to be played. And uh, you know, if you can't can't come watch it, make sure you listen to it on the radio. But we'd we'd rather for you to be there and live and in color because uh, we're going we're going to show up every Saturday and play and give the people their money's worth. No doubt, we want you there as well. Bring your headsets along; you can listen in as you watch there at the uh, stadium. And I got to say about that bandwagon, I'm riding shotgun, baby. All right, let's Coach go. Coach Dudley Hilton Show <laughs> presented by Appalachian Wireless. And uh, you'll want to get on this bandwagon. This team on its way to a 35th consecutive winning season behind this guy right here. And uh, the Bears tough test this Saturday. You'll want to be part of it. Kentucky Wesleyan at the Hambly Complex. We're on the air at 540. We encourage you to get there early and take part in the tailgate party and come out and see the Bears. Coach Dudley Hilton, congratulations, win one, number two this week. We're looking forward to it. Best of luck to the Bears. Thank you.
It's the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. From Jerry's Restaurant, join us again next Tuesday at 6.30 right here.